Dan from Sport Bike Track here, sportbiketrackgear.com, and today we are at Barber Motorsports Park with our friends from Sport Bike Track Time. Special guest, Terry Lynn from Leit. How you doing, Mama? Good to see you. Likewise. We had an opportunity to test firsthand the Leit STX road race or street riding neck race. They've had great success in the off-road world, no doubt about it. It's been a huge product since its introduction. Absolutely. We've been in the country since 2006, and off-road and motocross is definitely where we started. This STX race, though, has been in development for two years. So finally, it hits U.S. soil for spring of 2011. End of March, it'll be available to your customers. But today, we wanted to give everyone an opportunity to give it a try, because sometimes, when you're spending ample amounts of money, you want to try something first, make sure you're comfortable with it. And there's some really key things that we need to talk about before you go and purchase just a random size. Fitment is very, very important. Fitment's everything, and the reality with this product is, it's not for everyone. Right. right? It, it's not going to be compatible yeah, with every right. rider. Yeah. It's not going to be compatible with every jacket or suit. That being said, I would estimate the compatibility level at probably somewhere in the 90% range. Absolutely. It's going to work for most. Yeah, okay? I would agree. Uh, we've been doing now for a day and a half demos, and probably 8 out of 10 riders come in and say, we didn't even notice it. And some of our riders have even said they're not comfortable riding without it anymore. David? Yeah, for sure. I've, uh, I was pretty much a skeptic, apprehensive about trying uh, this the neck brace just because of the way my riding style is and how much I lean off the bike and Let how aggressive my neck is. This guy can literally, all right, I've known Dave for years, right? He can literally turn around and look at you while you're behind him without turning his shoulders, okay? Exorcist neck, think that. So he was like... I don't think I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to ride this. It's going to restrict my head too much. I can't look through the corner. He doesn't look through the corner he's in. He looks through the other one, I think, right? And then he went out and rode in it. I did go out and ride it, and I really, uh, I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it an opportunity. Like Terry said, you know, you, how often you get an opportunity to take it and, and look at and use something like this? It's it's going to be a safety that for sure. In this sport, safety is the number one priority for all of us. So, you know, I, I went out. I tried it out. Uh, I was very apprehensive, and now, I, like I said, I was telling Terry and Brian, I, I almost don't know that I can ride without one anymore. It's non-restricting whatsoever. I feel completely comfortable with it. Matter of fact, I, I almost feel like I'm missing something, almost like a helmet, when I'm not having it on. It is, it is a key piece of gear, no it, doubt. It's funny you should say that, because until the modern neck race, there has only been one piece of gear that would save your life in a motorcycle crash, and that was a helmet. Well, now there's two, because a serious neck injury... Uh, it's it's bad enough that it can be death. Your C1 and your C2 uh, control your breathing and your heart rate functions. So a lot of times we'll hear about motorcycle crashes where they died of a head injury, but those compression type crashes, uh, like a, a lawn dart or a, a severe high side where you land on the top of your head, your spine actually impales the bottom of your skull. And these braces protect against those, those types of injuries. So it's very important to consider this as part of your everyday gear. The directions this work in, right? There's these really great terms, okay, that I'm going to absolutely skip because that stuff doesn't work. This is, this is how it works. I'm going to show you all the different ways. I'm going to show you the two most important ones, okay? Obviously, moving forward, you come down. The chin bar of the helmet works in concert with the front of this brace to restrict her neck from moving too far down, okay, and it overextending the spinal column. Backwards, same deal. The back of the table can prevent that. To the side, to the other side, Compression downward, we're going to call this lawn dart. Let's say that you are literally going to land head first coming down. That's very serious. Compresses vertebra, damages the spinal cord almost every. It's very bad. Both sides of the helmet now are going to transfer the energy, right? And they're going to move it to different areas of the body and protect the spinal column and the spinal cord. Huge. That, that one is huge. Now, if you look at the back of the table, you're going to notice this upward curve, okay, and that is there for a very specific reason. If you impact face first, it can transfer energy backwards and basically try to push your head right off your shoulders. It's easy to understand how that can severely damage your spinal cord, no doubt about it. So what happens here is the concept is the back of the helmet will try and catch that edge on the table and prevent that motion, okay? There's pieces on this that can be damaged in an impact, okay? These two struts back here, they can be replaced. The whole thing can be rebuilt, right? Absolutely, all the parts and pieces are available. Because in a crash, 
it can absolutely be damaged. And that's when you'll know that it certainly did its job if there's pieces that are damaged. We're gonna go now to the most key part of this brace. There are three sizes available, okay? Yes. There's a sizing chart. If you're interested in buying one, what you need to do is you need to put on all the gear that you're gonna ride in, suit, back protector, if you're a chest protector wear, you have to have that on too. Then take your measurement. Exactly. Then choose the brace. When you get it, is it gonna fit right out of the box? I just put put it on, it's perfect, right? You'd be very lucky if it fit you right out of the box. It's just like dialing in the suspension on your motorcycle. You gotta do a little trial and error. But for the most part, the first thing that we want you to do is take a look at these sizing pins. That's your first adjustment. Get it pretty close to fit your chest circumference with the sizing pins. And then also, once you have that fairly close, the next thing you want to take a look at, these scapula wings, there's a tab here, they move in and out. That will be your fine tune adjustment. What you're trying to achieve is to have these pads rest on the meaty portion of your trapezius. This will be sitting flush on your chest, and really, so in the event of an impact, it's going to be spread across your chest and your meaty portion of your shoulders, taking all that energy away from your neck. So if you take a look at my shoulders right now, it's fitting on there fairly well. It interacts really good with this suit and the gear that I'm wearing. If you take a look at Brian, he's in a size large to extra large. Unfortunately, we don't have a 2X here for, to give him a try. Perhaps that would make the difference, perhaps it wouldn't, but you see the big gap right here. And the way that it's interacting with this suit is not necessarily, uh, this is not what you'd want to achieve. You need to have this resting on this meaty portion right here. So I would not advise him to go ride in this, he'd be uncomfortable and it would not work correctly. And for that reason I didn't ride in it. I was really kind of gutted about that because I've been looking forward to trying it. But the reality is for me it would have been more dangerous to ride in the brace exactly. than it would have been to not wear it. So for that reason, I chose not to. And we'll move forward. I'm going to get something that's going to fit one way or another. We're going to, we're going to find a way to make that happen. This is just basically an intro to this product. We're going to do a much more in-depth review back in the shop. I'm going to show you how to adjust it, do everything. Right now, it's 4 minutes to 12, and we're ready to go ride. Let's go ride. All right. Thanks, Thanks, guys. I'm Brian Van. Terry, Terry Lynn. David, David Gray. Gray.